Greetings citizens of the interweb, it's Matt from Hydro Gaming here this week to present a new video showcasing our single player medieval fantasy RPG that we're creating using the power of the Unreal Engine. Today's episode is a remake of the original episode 7 from a year and a half ago, which was completely unwatchable. You know the drill at this point. If you're new to the series, we're going to be going through and re-recording the first 12 episodes because they were just so bad. We've only got a few left to go however, which is very exciting, and I've got a pretty big surprise plan for once all of the remakes are completed. But we'll get to that in due time. For now, let's focus on today's episode. So at this point in development of Nightwatch, we had done some more work on our gun locomotion system, added weapon dropping and pickup so our items appear in the overworld, continued work on our inverse kinematic system, which by the way, we have since finished, but at the point of the original Episode 7's creation, we were having some problems, but we'll get to that later. Beyond that, we'll go over this week's dev shoutout and some more NPC naming. And some very exciting news, Hydro Gaming has its first ever sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. So as I'm sure most of you already know, your internet service provider can see your browser activity. You know, these guys. Dang it, guess you have to deal with our packages. How do I avoid their prying eyes, I hear you asking? Well, that's where ExpressVPN comes in. ExpressVPN puts a stop to all their nasty spying by rerouting 100% of your network traffic through their secure encrypted servers. This works by masking your IP address, which makes it a lot harder for people like your service provider, big tech companies, and other weirdos who want to see what you're doing online, to match your activity back to you and collect information on the way you browse, or the content you enjoy when using the old interweb. You know the content I'm talking about. The Star Wars sequel trilogy. You don't want your friends finding out you like those movies. Speaking of streaming, this is the thing that makes ExpressVPN a must-have. I'm willing to bet that most of you are all too aware of the fact that streaming services like Netflix have different available shows depending on your country. I myself am from Canada, but I love South Park. Unfortunately, I don't live in the UK where South Park is on Netflix. ExpressVPN unblocks restricted content, so you can just change your location and watch any show you want. They have 94 different countries to choose from, which means you can access any restricted content on the internet. So now, I can keep watching South Park. So with all that being said, I think ExpressVPN's a must-have. I myself use it all the time, and for this video, they're offering a great deal to the Hydro Gaming community. If you use my link in the description, you can sign up and get three months free of ExpressVPN. And a big thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. Okay, and something I'd like to address real quick, you're probably asking yourself, hey, where's episode 24 with the UI redesign? Well, I took some screen grabs here to show you the progress I'm making. The main menu screen is done with a brand new original theme song for Nightwatch created by Nos Beats. The UI redesign is done, I've created some new locations outside of our main town Edenvale, finished off the waiting system to pass time so that the clock and weather checks actually sync up with the ultra dynamic sky and weather packs, that was a pain, and I've created a whole new biome inspired by the fields outside of Whiterun in Skyrim. The one with the rolling gold fields where you fight the first dragon, you know the one. So don't worry, that episode is almost done, I've just got some minor updates to make to the game before I finish recording the last bits of footage. Now, we've got some big changes to the game to cover in the meantime, and I'm not even going to make you sit through the intro. Let's just jump right in. So, first and foremost, we added in-game drops. What this means is that you can drop any item in your inventory and have it appear on the ground. As you can see from the footage, at this point we can only do it with the rifle we added to the game, but as you'll see in later episodes, you can drop any item in your inventory. This actually brings me to a question I wanted to ask you guys. I guess I'll provide a little context for this first though. So later on in development to help save on performance, we adopted the strategy used by Fallout 76, I know, Fallout 76, where objects all just appear in a little bag when you drop them. But I'm wondering, do you guys like this change at all? Would you rather just see the actual item you drop rather than a little bag? I've been doing some thinking and I'm not too sure that actually rendering the in-game objects will hurt performance too much, so long as they're not dropped in massive quantities. And then, even if they are, I guess that would be more of a self-imposed hit to performance rather than one forced on the player by the game. I don't know, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Should I just have everything be a little brown bag you drop on the ground, or should I render each unique object? So this section is pretty straightforward. We just took the same methodology we employed when designing our unarmed locomotion system and applied it to the way armed movement works. 
A quick example would be the way that crouching works. Each animation has transition states that trigger as each animation switches. So when we change from a standing position to a crouching position, we don't just pop from one stance to the other abruptly. We smoothly move between poses. I know, I know, it's pretty revolutionary stuff. As time moved on, however, we did end up switching to the ALS movement system, which by the way is free and on the UE4 marketplace if you want to check it out. I ended up doing this because of how good I think it looks, but I also liked how Kubald's gun animations looked. So what I ended up doing was using animation blending to put the two systems together. So what we end up with is the ALS animations playing on the character's lower half and Kubald's anim set playing on the character's upper half. And I'm pretty happy with the results. If you're looking for results that I'm not particularly happy with, you can see my first attempt at adding a combat role to the game. It didn't go too well. I will note, however, that this footage is not only from a while back, I had to capture it on a day where OBS just refused to work for some reason, um, it was unfortunately recorded on my phone. However, you can still get a good idea of how poorly my initial attempt went. I don't know, maybe once you see the footage you'll want me to add it back into the game, but here it is anyway. So if you've seen our newer episodes, specifically episode 21 where we added horseback riding, you know that we eventually got our inverse kinematic system to work. Now seeing as I've already explained this system a zillion times on the channel, I'm just going to reuse my own explanation because I think it covers it pretty okay. Basically what I would like to get across is that we added an inverse kinematics or IK system to our character. For the purpose of our game, the way it works here is that a line trace is created below the character to detect the angle of whatever surface the character happens to be standing on. These changes in angle are then applied to the character's legs and feet, so instead of acting like they're standing on flat ground when the character is on a slope surface, their ankles and knees will bend to compensate. Alright, so we're all clear on what inverse kinematics are? Perfect. Okay, so obviously they stopped working at this point. The explanation I just played along with the footage literally came from episode 5, as in two episodes ago when the system worked. I did something and now it doesn't work. That's the beauty of being a game developer, you fix one thing and ten more things break immediately. So yeah, it took us from episode 7 all the way to episode 21 before things were finally working well again. Yeah, 14 whole episodes, yikes. Hopefully we don't break anything more important than that, I can think of a few things that could have gone wrong along the way. Maps, write storylines, block out your maps, make movement systems, weapons, armor, a character creator, in-game economy, NPCs, and so much more. Yeah, let's not talk about that. This week's developer shoutout goes out to Logic Leo. I actually discovered his channel a little while back when one of his videos popped up in my recommended feed. It was actually a submission he had put together for developer Game Jam, where he made a game where you can phase between the future and the past to fight enemies in different time periods. Sounds awesome. Anyways, I've been following his most recent project, Spark Mutts, which is an open world third person steampunk fantasy adventure game. In the most recent episode, he shows off a lot of techniques he used for foliage spawning as well as the in-game building system. If you like what you see on screen and this sounds like a game you would enjoy, be sure to check out his channel and some of his work, link in the description below. Today we're choosing at Curtis Wielden to name an NPC after. He's been with us since the original episode zero years ago and has been following the game ever since. The name he ended up wanting to go with is... Wordis Kielden? I, I mean, I just... <sighs> Everybody meet Wordis Kielden, the fishery master. He runs the Edenvale fishery and completely unironically wins the award for best NPC name. <laughs> oh, it's so stupid. <laughs> okay, so from here on out, if you get picked to have an NPC named after you, the quality bar is now Wordis Kielden. If you can beat that, you're in. I mean, I promised I'd go with whatever name he wanted, so I can't go back on it now. I just... I thought we'd get something that wasn't Wordus the Fishery Master. Wordus just sounds like something you'd have to scrape off the bottom of a boat or something. Alright, whatever. That's the episode. I don't have an outro, so how about a sneak peek of the new main menu screen and the new theme song. Bye, everyone.